Hello. Hello and welcome to this Tekarati interview series ahead of Big Data and AI World on the 8th and 9th of March at Excel London. I'm Stuart Crowley, Close to Still Media's Global Content Manager and Editor of Tekarati. And today my guest is Emma Wicks. She is the Head of Editorial Insight and Analy Analytics at The Telegraph. Emma will join a panel at Big Data and AI World on how to make sure your teams have the right skills. So hello, Emma, and welcome to this interview series. Hi, and uh, thank you, Stuart, for inviting me along for this. Um, thinking about your teams having the right skills in, in this ever fast paced and growing industry of Big Data and AI, what do you think is the biggest challenge for C-level executives and data leaders who are looking to enhance their team's skills or, or even hire more people, in fact, in the next 12 months? The challenge has actually been less around the technical skills. I've noticed that most of my team are really focused on that. Even new graduates coming in now have already been off. They've done SQL courses and things like that. And they're really proactive in that area, whereas sort of in the past, we wouldn't have had anyone who had any um, coding experience and I'd be training them on how to use um, Excel first before we let them near the code. Um, Probably the area that I'm focusing on more with my team, and I'm hearing this more um, from other data leaders, is actually some of the soft skills. It's that partnering with the business, understanding their stakeholders' needs, tailoring the analytics, the data science models, the output to the business, so it's really relevant and it's really impactful. And a lot of that really comes from having those deep stakeholder relationships and understanding what they're going through and what they need. Um, that's one where as well as sort of the leaders, we often are a lot more exposed to that. So it's how you bring in the rest of the team, especially more junior members, that they can get that exposure and that context, but at the right times, because there will always be times when I can't bring them into the briefing session, times when I'm not even in the briefing session. So um, it's how that they get, they pick up that and build that confidence with stakeholders so that their work can land with the impact it deserves after all the work that's gone into it. What would you say is one of your techniques for um, making sure that that, um, that knowledge is filtered down in the appropriate manner? We're actually going to be moving our team to sit in the editorial floor with the journalists and the SEO team so that they'll be closer, understand more of that work just by sitting near there and understanding that and sort of demystifying that, you know, it's not a scary area over there that they can't speak to. Do you feel that fears around, um, you know, maybe replacing workforces, uh, do you feel like it's a legitimate fear? Uh, do you think that workforces feel threatened by these advancements or, or should there be more optimism that actually these technologies can enhance their careers and enhance their skills like you'll be talking about in your panel. Change like this and especially a massive disruptor is always going to cause fears um, and especially it's actually probably going to cause more fears for more senior people who maybe have got slightly more stuck in their ways mm -hmm. and are worried that their knowledge and experience that they've built up is going to become obsolete um, and maybe they don't they're not at the top cutting edge and you know wasn't what they've been doing for years so i can understand why people are fearful and i've had moments like that as well but i th i think there's always been a lack of data professionals the industry has just been growing and growing and with all of this there's going to be a need for interpretation understanding the data understanding the limitations understanding how it can be used and those skills are going to be universal whatever the technology that's going to be used the same has happened with programming languages coming in and out um, of fashion. I think I started, um, you know, doing a lot more VBA than anybody really should be doing these days. And those will just continue, but the skills are the same, even if it's a different language and different technique. Is there anything that you have your eye on that you've, you've seen perhaps discussed or new advancements that um, really, really excites you about your uh, opportunities? For me, I think it is really about some of the um, enhancements and progress that's been happening in some of the image recognition world. Mm. Um, so the text language um, has been sort of a key focus and has been growing. We've used it quite a lot with our data science team to enhance the 
metadata that we have on articles but the area that's really a blind spot is sort of imagery and the impact that imagery has we've got varying examples where colloquially we kind of know if we have a image that's a bit like this we think it works better for drawing people in mm -hmm. but actually classifying imagery into different buckets what the focus is the colors is it warm the, the feelings of it uh, to really get under the skin of that is something i think still quite in its infancy in most places some of the capabilities are out there but no one's brought it in and i think that's kind of the next stage that it's a little way away but um will be really exciting and really kind of and even where we've used some of the tech stuff, it's not to take away from what we're doing and replace what we're doing. It's to enhance the data that we can use to then provide insights. So if we can do that on sort of, uh, I'm sure, images to start with and then video, that'd be even better. Are there any particular um, skills or skill gaps that, um, that might be facing you and your industry? Um, and how, how do you go, go about addressing those skill gaps to really then start to use those skills to adopt those technologies. A lot of what I'm looking for when I'm hiring or developing people is that interest. It even comes down to something as basic as um, QA at the end of the work. Are people interested in what it's saying and what it means to the business rather than just right, that's done, next piece of work that I'm picking up. Yeah. That's the sort of thing that's very hard to teach. How to teach somebody to be interested in what they're working on. I can't really do that. I can teach them to learn Python or about this advancement here or how we can um, use statistics to make sure our tests are statistically significant but having that real interest and drive and passion is very hard to teach and that's what we really look for. How would you ensure that a team member is continuously developing those skills that you're looking for for them to succeed in in that role that's where it's really there's not one silver bullet that does it it's not send them on this one course and it is one that's just a continuous journey that people grow on i think and that's where it can be slightly frustrating that um the same thing might be on your objectives every single year because it's not that you haven't improved in the last year it's just that you constantly need to keep working on that one so um it's getting for me a lot of it starts with exposure getting them closer to the business so that they can um, understand the business and then tailor um, getting more face time with stakeholders so that they can really understand the stakeholders problems rather and getting involved in both the briefing process and the delivery of work giving them opportunities to present, which isn't always the stakeholders, creating those opportunities to present within the team as well to build up those skills. We also send people on some courses, some of them are run internally or externally on things like presentations, communication, having business impact, facilitating action. So those are some of the sorts of courses, but then it is really creating those opportunities to use those because it's definitely something that um, is practiced. And I've had members of my team who were getting really good at them and then they ended up on a big project where they weren't talking to stakeholders very often or presenting very often and then they'd have to build up that confidence again so it's not something that oh i've, I've done it it's done now uh, it's really constantly finding those opportunities to bring them on that that journey thinking about your session on finding the right skills and thinking about yourself as a a leader in your team uh, and in the business, what do you feel is the importance of in-person events like big data and AI world? And why would you encourage people like yourself to come and attend your event to really learn about how to really lead a team in the right way? For me, at a certain level um, within a company, you have less peers that you can go to. And yes, I still have a manager and things, but there's less people in the organization that have the same problems as you and fewer people that you can sort of look up to or look sideways at to learn from. So partly for me, it's just finding that community of people where I can share issues, find somebody who has had something similar at a different company, um, maybe get some tips. Also sometimes realizing you're not alone. It's not just you struggling with this problem. Lots of the problems that you're, we're having are the same elsewhere and nobody's got the solution to all of them but we've all got little bits that maybe between us can help 
And then the other one, the industry is moving fast. There's lots of new ideas, lots of new technology, and it's especially in a smaller place. So the Telegraph is sort of medium size, but our analytics team, you know, isn't as big as some. It's getting those new ideas from also from different industries as well. So um, because I've been there for four years now, lots of the ideas I came came with I've now used. So how to keep getting new ideas and pushing things forward. That's where I'm looking for inspiration from events, talks and things like that.